that is exactly why most of these contracts that were created when they were much younger to join the trainees of these schools are now called slave contracts because there is no other adjective to describe them except slaves. Boys and girls and welcome to a new video. I'm Gianmarco and in today's video we are talking about K-pop i.e. the pop of Korea. The music, the breathtaking choreography, the catchy melodies, the amazing performances, the perfection of the idols, faces, the costumes, the voices and the music videos. Everything about K-pop is perfection and the K-industry. Pop industry likes to project these images of perfect glamour, but the reality is much more sinister. Young teenagers are trained to perfection by these big entertainment companies with the sole purpose of earning as much as possible from their investments. These young teenagers sign these contracts with their lives with no guarantee that they will later be part of a group and thus have the much hoped for success. You have to think that this training to become idols is so grueling and hard that it can take years before a person eventually debuts in a real music group. And it is not guaranteed you could train for 10-20 years without ever actually becoming a Korean idol. Not to mention that having happened the debut is not interrupted, then your training that is constant, rigorous and the agents, the record companies, managers put these guys through real torture to sustain that lifestyle and that appearance of perfection all for the money but all of that will be part of this giant video. I know very well that among you there will be a lot of K-pop fans so I ask you one thing put a thumbs up subscribe to my channel and leave down in the comments your opinion and please let's keep a quiet conversation. I as a fan after writing this video found myself saying is it fair to support all this what price are these people paying to entertain us? Let's start with the fact that the K-pop industry is a more than $5 billion industry and is very well known for being brutal, strict and glamorous. The whole thing seems to be made up of elements that together shouldn't even work. And it's undeniable that however any entertainment industry has its dark sides and its nicer sides, it's not a coincidence that we have a lot of star stories, pop, world artists, musicians, actors who have had very very dark lives precisely because of the entertainment industry. One example among all is Brittany Raga. I've talked to me about it a thousand and two hundred times but if I told you that the K-pop industry is so dark that it almost makes all the stories that have known me so far pale, would you believe me? Becoming a K-pop idol is a life choice that you make from childhood. K-pop idols are built from the beginning as true performance animals and are trained to be exactly what the entertainment industry wants them to be. Imagine them as entities that are built brick upon brick where at some point very little of themselves remains most are enrolled in K-industry training schools. Pop from a young age because they are seen as a very appealing career option for the audience mainly made up of teenagers and kids after all, who wouldn't want to be rich, attractive, talented and popular. The schools are around Korea and they are built by the record companies themselves who then will have the arduous task of having to collect the money from these eventual artists who will be trained over the years getting into these training programs is very expensive. We are talking about figures like $50,000 a year so we are not really talking about a program for poor people and that is why many times our most famous Korean idols actually have very wealthy family backgrounds especially because as I told you there is no guarantee that you at the end of your education will become rich, famous, handsome and everything else. When you become a trainee that is a trainee, you live together with other trainees who are training together with you. Usually the dorms are small, cramped in short. It's not really a great hotel. Most of them are not allowed to leave these dorms except to go to school and life inside these training places is hard. Uh, e e it's tense stressful, painful. It's difficult because there is a lot of competition between the various trainees. They wake up at 5 in the morning and probably after school training, singing lessons, dance lessons, 
they will go back to sleep probably at moon at night. So imagine doing such a life is not easy. They are constantly monitored by supervisors. They have a very strict diet regime. They exercise, practice, little sleep in short. It's a torture. Imagine doing Friends of Mary with the Holy Woman Mary. But this becomes a real Raga because at the end of the day, this is that is to say Raga, I can't do. Anything you torture me, even I pay you, rob me. I don't think it's pleasant for anybody. But the fact is, those who are more constant have a chance to make it to the end. Unfortunately, personal relationships with each other are not well seen. And it's also not well seen. To date other people, they can't have a phone in any electronic apparatus that could be used to communicate with the outside world. And them socializing is strictly monitored. Understand me to me, you can't do any Anything, little things a little bit daring even a little bit kissing at the best you can do but don't get caught parents can request visits but they are not guaranteed and they have to be requested in advance especially because if you suddenly show up at these training schools while your child is training they will send you home I mean there is just no way they will let you meet your child when you get into these schools obviously you have aptitudes I don't know to dancing to singing to acting all that stuff and of course you get divided into groups based on your talent however less of course they also divide you based on your beauty you get judged of course by your family background your education your wealth and whatever else superficially makes up your person because it absolutely doesn't matter your personality your personality is the least important thing everything else matters the Bleep. Everything is peppered with a series of toxic elements one after the other that are increasingly hallucinating in terms of, for example, food. Because you're supposed to do this whole life or scene, but you also eat very little. And these diets are so dangerous that it's totally unhealthy for a teenager or for trainees, for example. A few years ago it had become very popular, a kind of challenge that was called the paper cup diet where performers were taken to count their daily calories based on a paper cup. Everything that is inside this paper cup you can eat and that is your daily portion you imagine. Eating for one day stuff that is in a paper cup paper but boy really I run to the overta after two hours to make it a little bit lighter. However, there were also other variations of this challenge where I could have so many little cups that you could use during the day to fill with your various food, which I guess it must have been shots bow of, I don't know, candy also, because really with this lifestyle of life is just passing out or collapsing anyway. But all of this we know because some of the people who join these training programs then escape or at least somehow try to break out of this kind of captivity and we have their testimonies. There was one named Yodius who left his K training program dot pop and then stated to the press what was happening to him inside this school. The weekly weighings to monitor his weight and if it turned out that precisely you were fat, you were deprived of meals to try to get back into your oven weight or what is considered according to their standards of beauty, an ideal oven weight in the most extreme cases the food consisted only of an apple and a protein drink. Of course, these revelations raised concerns as far as K-pop idols and far from it, the K-pop industry, but really it is only the tip of the iceberg because when you are training you are also led to choose this kind of torture yourself because you think it is the only way to achieve your ultimate goal and among these is also plastic surgery korea has very particular beauty standards that are dictated almost at the level of centimeters of actual measurements of distance between the eyes the nose the size the height of the bridge of the nose the lips the snout of the face everything is measured and everything is declared perfect and ideal according to standards that are really unattainable except through hard training and lots of money and especially plastic surgery. It is practically impossible to be born perfect and ideal. None of us are perfect. And although these idle training schools cannot subject you against your will, you are directed, you are advised to undergo these surgeries. And some of these surgeries are very invasive, such as jaw modification, which are very painful and very hard surgeries, nose variations, eye variations. In short, everything is just for the ultimate 
said entertainment, but there is an end. Unfortunately, no, you may have done all this mess of stuff for nothing. And for many people, it is the least of the cases is just the fact that you can join a music group at some point when you get selected to join a group here. An amazing thing happens that a lot of people don't know about. Often you get a new name, a certain position that has to be yours within the group. It may be that you're the best dancer, the best singer, the best looking one, the one that's going to be the face of the group, and then a personality, a personality that studied table to make sure that you're loved as much as possible, that audience, a personality that 99, 100% of the time, it will never be yours. It will never be the one you were born with. So imagine becoming actors 24 a to completely eclipse yourself all for entertainment. Now let's say you got into the music group, you got your new name, your new personality, you underwent any plastic surgery to real torture, you didn't eat anything for years and years and years, you're okay now. Now you can give yourself the cup of joy and now you won, no? Many times you don't win anything at all. Many idols earn so little that they can't even pay their debts with the school that trained them until then. Because all those earnings are divided between manager production, house labels, and then the rest of your group, some K artists pop, have revealed really paltry earnings. It's everywhere in all the radio stations, in all in the most beautiful music videos. And so eventually many of these singers, in order to be able to support themselves, they start to work a second job. And that's exactly why most of these contracts that were created when they were much Younger to join the Occidental shots of these schools are now called slave contracts because there is no other adjective to describe them except slaves. In 2009, three members of the TVXQ group filed a lawsuit against their agency SM Entertainment challenging the terms of their 13-year contract, then called a slave contract. It was precisely because of this dispute that we know what lies behind these contracts. Now the K-pop idols have somewhat more favorable guarantees regarding these contracts, but the conditions are still very, very unfavorable. The economic element is not really the plus, however, maybe having a little more freedom is not. Unfortunately, you'll have to keep practicing more and more and more. You'll have to record new music, make music videos, practice, rehearse these workouts, go on tour, promote your CDs, promote your projects, go on talk shows, go on programs, do photo shoots, show up at public events. So the time where it is for you, there is no is unlike American bands of American artists who have the ability to take breaks, K-pop bands can take probably one or two months off between projects. Very little. And this endless cycle of work, work, work obviously doesn't have a good impact on your mental health. And many of them end up having real burnout. They collapse in the stage, they pass out, they are sick, they exhaust themselves just to entertain us. G Dragon from the famous band Big Bang found himself in this exact situation. He began to rage in the stage after singing 10 songs one after another. Other artists left the music industry directly because it was not sustainable because of their health problems. Some even took their own lives like one of the members of Shanae whom I loved when he took his own life was a tragedy and her disappearance shook the K-pop and the whole world and highlighted one more time how toxic this whole world actually is. And before he took his own life, Jo Kyung had shared a letter expressing his struggle with depression and the feeling of being overwhelmed by expectations. Anything these idols do could somehow diminish their, their monetary value, for example. One of the members of Big Bang was accused of smoking marijuana, something that in Italy or in the rest of the world, no one would give a damn about it whatever who cares he was forced to make a public apology saying that he had caused a great disappointment and inconvenience to all his fans and the k-industry dot pop for his gigantic mistake okay marijuana blah 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 whether you have any idea or not but raga but really i mean it had been a disaster to be accused 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 there were no photos there was no evidence accused all this goes to hallucinating levels since these people who are seen as investments also have to maintain their phony personality and above all assembly of purity. They don't belong to anybody but their fans. They can't have romantic relationships with anybody. Yes, and this thing obviously 
leads to deleterious situations where sooner or later these guys will want to have a private relationship they will want to have a relationship with somebody they will want to have a marriage get engaged here they can't it's forbidden completely and this whole situation is fueled by the fans and it's also fueled by the k-pop industry where the fans like to imagine having a relationship with these idols they like to have the idea that they are their husband wife and so if they ever have a real relationship it would collapse this whole fantasy and this thing happened that somebody then created relationships real and secretly for example yuna from four minutes with eden from pentagon who dated for a while secretly when this story came out it was a disaster cube entertainment iee the record company lost stock value for this relationship, all because fans were literally shocked by this secret relationship. Both Yuna and Eden were both kicked out of the record company for the crime of having an affair with each other. Look at me if all this stuff isn't absolutely hallucinating, it's dystopian almost. And I feel a little guilty because I love hip hop, I listen to it all the time. I feed with my interest and my listenings this whole highly toxic industry. The fact is that it's not, it's only the record companies that are negative, but it's the fans themselves that create this environment. Some fans spend so much money on albums, merchandising, products, tours, that they feel somehow they are sponsored for these idols and they demand that they continue to entertain them because I'm sponsoring you I'm buying you if these idols deviate from the personality they pretend they should have the fans tend to react angrily and so they pretend that the female idols are cute sweet funny submissive passive and if they somehow try to be more girl power here they might get angry in the a crazy thing happened when the girls generation had performed in Seoul that crowded completely completely rebelled and had done what is called the ocean black i.e. They hadn't done anything, they hadn't sang, they hadn't shouted, they hadn't taken pictures, they had just been quietly present while they sang for 10 minutes. This was because the girls' generation had been guilty of pushing the ideal of girl power a little bit more and the fans didn't like that. Imagine performing then in front of a gigantic crowd but doing nothing. Perhaps one of the saddest, even most in my opinion truly shameful scandals in K-pop is the case of Sully, an FX member who had started dating Choi Jinri of Dynamic 2. He was at 14 years her senior and the fans absolutely did not like this. She was cyberbullied to unimaginable levels because she was seen as that idol who had broken that spell, that pretense of the pure girl who had hooked up with another well-liked boy from another music group. After posting a video on Instagram where she cried and asked to be left alone, she took her own life in her mid-twenties. And along with other losses in the K-pop world, it is a tragedy that will probably not end with her. Because sustaining this lifestyle is really so complicated. Imagine these girls who are very young, they have to dance, sing, perform, and they weigh maximum 45-50 kilograms. Whereas for boys, the limit is 75 kilograms. You are a tall boy, he is made of muscle. There is nothing then. 75 kilograms is low, it's very low as a weight. And if you add to that the fact that there are not only your fans, but there are also the anti-fans, the whole thing becomes even more macabre. The anti-fans are the haters, which is all that part of the public that looks at you to hate you. But these are guilty of crimes like doxing, which is spreading your personal private information, where you live, your cell phone number, your private contact, your family, to put you in danger. In they had even happened a hallucinatory stuff when Yunho, a member of the band TVXQ, drank a drink offered by an anti-fan who had ended up a fan. Here in this drink was some attic. Yes, some glue. After drinking it, of course Yunho was immediately taken to the hospital where he underwent gastric lavage, which reminded me a little bit of when all to drink he put the Julia of the Diavel in and they gave him the gastric lavage. My god, I am an anti-fan of my sister. Ah, P.S. I was little, I was like two years old, she was two maybe. In 2007 then another tragedy happened when a 16-year-old girl named Lee Hyun Ki 
Yuki was on a TV program showing her Purdue weight transformation. She then later had her picture taken together with a Korean idol from Super Junior. Of course, the anti fans turned on her, and the situation was so tragic that all the cyberbullying led to her taking her own life. But there are so many examples. There is that of Kang Hobi, who was stalked by anti fans who did everything to her, threatened her, threatened her family, and she herself, by blow of all this, tried also to take her own life. But thank God she survived. But it doesn't stop there because if you thought we could go even lower, now I want to go to the even deeper element of K pop. The even darker part, which is forced sex work. And by that I mean idols forced to sell themselves as escorts intimately in favor of success, inducted directly by record companies. This problem became public in 2009. In that year, a sweet Korean actress, Jang Jae Ho, ended her life in a seven page letter documenting what had happened to her inside the Korean entertainment industry. In this letter, she said that her agent had beaten her on many occasions and forced her to sleep with a long list of very important and influential people in the Korean entertainment industry. The Korean National Human Rights Commission went on to interview a great many artists from the K-pop and K-entertainment worlds and found that over 60% of these artists had received direct requests from their management, from their record company, to engage in intimate relationships with high-profile political figures and businessmen. 60% is a lot and it doesn't stop there because as I was telling you most of these idols who train then don't get into music groups and what happens to these people they end up in the escort industry. So I asked myself but why do we do this? Why do we do this? Why do we watch them? Why do they continue on this path where they know nothing is guaranteed? And maybe the fact that they are now part of this system and getting out of it would be futile. Maybe the idea of failure is more frightening than this eventual future. In my opinion, the real question is what are you going to do with all this information? I think the only factor that can improve the situation is the fact that little by little the K-pop world is improving, the industry is taking very small steps, but I think the biggest power is in the hands of the fans and ourselves who enjoy this kind of entertainment. We can make a difference. I am trying to do that with this video. And now I am passing the ball to you. Let's try to do something. It might be helpful. Let me know down in the comments and especially look forward to hearing your ideas and opinions. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I release a new video on Tuesday at 15 every Saturday at 10.30 and every so often on Thursday, but no one ever knows that. I send you a kiss in a big scanda and see you next video. Hello?